Game of the Year 2017. I've been looking forward to making this video for some time now. I kept the list, a running list of the games that really impressed me this year, that really entertained me, that surprised me, and that basically made me say to other people, you need to play this game because it is fantastic. I love each and every game on this list, but only one can be Game of the Year. So here is my top 10 for Game of the Year 2017. What is going on, guys? Randall Thor 19 the man with the million, back again with another video. And before we talk about the 10 best games I played this year, if you want to see the 10 worst games I had the misfortune of playing, uh, that was the video I did yesterday, so check that out. Also, as well, I did a top 15 indie games of the year as well. If you want to see some of what the uh, best indie games of 2017 have to offer. Now, I'm going to go out on the record right at the beginning. And because I don't have a Switch, there will be no Nintendo games on this list. So if you're looking for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey or any games on that platform, they won't be here because I didn't get a chance to play any of them. Maybe I'll play it for 2018, but those games aren't there. And I finally was able to get a PlayStation halfway through the year. And most of the games I played on the PlayStation were just catching up on the backlog of games I missed. So there were some notable games I didn't get to play because of my busy schedule and things like that. So you won't see Uncharted Lost Legacy or Neo or Nier or Persona 5 uh, because I just haven't gotten to those games. I'm also pretty burnt out on open world games right now. So you won't see Horizon Zero Dawn because I haven't finished it and Shadow of War or Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm just not feeling open world games, but I do plan on playing those when the uh, mood strikes. So here we go. Top 10 games of the year. Ooh, I'm excited. Can't wait to talk about all this stuff. So coming in at number 10 is actually Call of Duty World War II. Now, last year, I had Infinite Warfare at, like, the number four or five spot because I felt it was such a great story. You know, I really enjoyed the sci-fi setting, and I was a little bit disappointed they were going back to the tried-and-true formula, boots on the ground, World War II, because I felt there really wasn't a story there to tell anymore because we had played all those games in the past. Well, I was wrong, pleasantly wrong, because Sledgehammer Games made a fantastic single-player experience with Call of Duty World War II. I really enjoyed getting to know the men in the platoon I was fighting with. Uh, they actually made your teammates, you know, uh, usable. Like, they actually have some worth. They'll throw you med kits and ammunition and things like that. And the story just keeps on ramping up. It is a good time. Now, just like all the other games on this list, uh, I have videos on the channel if you want a more in-depth review I'm just going to kind of talk about each one pretty short so you know this video isn't that long. And for Call of Duty, as you guys know, I'm not a big multiplayer dude. I enjoyed the multiplayer for this, but I'm just kind of judging this game on the basis of the single player, which is what I cared about. And it was a pretty damn good time. So number 10, Call of Duty World War II. Now coming in at number 9 is Prey, which coincidentally was... The number one most anticipated game last year for me. Like, I was dying to play Prey. And when I first started the game out, I was transfixed. It was amazing. The open world that they built. All the different ways you can tackle all the objectives. Whether putting the points into strength to move things out of the way. Or using the glue gun to get into the vents. There's so many different ways to tackle an objective. It's kind of mind-blowing. And the way the world is constructed, it's, it seems like Talos 1, the space station you're on, is such, it's like a living, breathing place. They went to a lot of care to make that a real place. And I was getting all these Bioshock vibes of this lived-in world. However, the combat wasn't up to par. And honestly, if the combat was just a little bit better, this game would probably end up being my, num my game of the year. Honestly. That's how much I love everything else about Prey. You know, the setting, uh, even the story. Uh, I loved everything about Prey. It's just that the combat felt 
so flat to me, but I had to put it in here because I enjoyed the game tremendously. I put like 35 hours into the game. I could not stop playing it. It just could have been, could have been one of the greats. Could have been number one if there was just a little bit better combat. So that's number nine. Coming in at number eight is a game that you saw the other day in my top 15 indie game of the year, and that is Rhyme. Now, I love this game. Uh, I wasn't expecting much when I played it, but it's a kind of 3D open world, you know, adventure puzzle game uh, that has a very, you know, great art style. Love the look of the game and has a really great story once you get to understand, even though there's really no dialogue, it has a very emotional and touching story. It's not very long, probably take you around six hours to beat on your first playthrough. Pretty easy thousand if you're looking to get all the collectibles. But what else can I say about Rhyme that I didn't say in my review or in the video the other day? Uh, I, this is a wonderful game, and I hope you guys you know pick it up if it seems like something that you are interested in. So that's number eight. And coming in at the number seven spot is Injustice 2, the fighting game from uh, NetherRealm Studios and Warner Brothers. And I didn't play Injustice 1. So I didn't really know what to expect. I do love me Mortal Kombat, so I'm a fan of the developer. And I was blown away by just how amazing Injustice 2 is in all of the aspects. Of course, the thing that caught my eye the most, being a DC fan, was the single-player story they put in a fighting game, which you don't really see a lot of anymore. Fully realized cutscenes, voice acting, an actual story. Even though it's short, at least your first time, it was like watching a movie. It was better than any DC movie that had come out before it. And the fighting is just so good and has such a great set of characters. And then, of course, you have the online with all the options there. You have the multiverse, which makes it feel so completely different. This is the complete package for a fighting game. And I'm not really that big into fighters. I am a casual fighting fan. You know, I do some combos here and there. But I'm not looking to like get online because I'm going to get destroyed. But that experience of playing through the campaign twice, of playing as Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern and everybody else, and just I just had a smile. My inner child was just having a great time playing through Injustice 2. And that is why it is at the number 7 position. At number 6, we have another game you saw in my top 15 indie game of the year, and that is... Cuphead. Now, I'm sure for a lot of people, Cuphead will probably be either higher on the list, uh, but the other games above it I felt were better. And that's not to say Cuphead isn't great, because it is. The art direction is amazing. It's just a fun game to play. I love all the bosses. You know, I wish the run and gun levels were a little bit better, and the overworld had a little bit more to do rather than just walking from one fight to the next. But hey, that all can be approved upon in the sequel. I do wish they would have added online co-op, although it's understandable why it is not there. But for a studio's first outing, for their first game, this is a masterpiece. It's going to be tough for them to top this game, but it doesn't really matter because they created one of the best games of 2017, maybe the best indie of 2017 in a lot of people's eyes, and this game deserves... All the recognition and awards it's been getting. So hopefully if you haven't picked it up yet, uh, you consider that. Because Cuphead is just that good. So here we are. We're in the top five. And I know this number fifth pick, number five, is going to... Some people are going to roll their eyes at this one. I know it. I know it when I put it in here. Because originally, this game wasn't going to be in my top five. I scoffed at the notion of it being a Game of the Year candidate myself. But then I played the game, and I'm sure you guys can figure out what I'm talking about, and that is the one and only Player Unknown Battlegrounds, aka PUBG. Now, a lot has been said about this game. I finally got to play it when it released on the Xbox and Game Preview on December 12th, and since then, I'm recording this on December 28th, I have not played any other game besides PUBG. I am 90 hours in. And the addiction is still as strong as it has ever been. I don't know what else to say about this game. It is just, I get on, 
I hook up with my friends. We do squads or duos, and we play five, six, seven games in a row, and then it's over, and then we just rinse and repeat the next day. It is just a pure addiction. Like, each game is always different than the next. Things just happen, and it's just that adrenaline rush you get when it's you versus another person or when you're rolling up on a team or out running the blue line that I can't properly explain. But, you know, there are reasons why it's in the number five spot, not number one. For starters, it's a game preview game. It's not finished. I don't think it's fair to the any other games uh, above there. You know that are actually finished products. Uh, it's only a, a, a mode with a single map right now, so there's not enough content. All I can say is that I haven't felt this way about a multiplayer game since Halo 2. I'm loving my time with PUBG. I'm not sure if the addiction is going to stop or how I'm going to stop it. You know, I have other games that I would love to play. Uncharted, Lost Legacy. I wanted to play that game so I can at least include it here for the the countdown, you know, the top 10, but I just couldn't stop playing PUBG. And that right there, the, you know, the, the amount of fun I'm having with my friends while playing this game, that's why it's in my top five and why it beat out Cuphead. So player known battlegrounds, PUBG. I can't wait to read the comments about people hating on it and hating on me for including it. But yeah, there you go. Fifth spot goes to PUBG. Which brings us to the number four spot, spot, can I even speak, uh, that you may have seen also in my top 15 indie game of the year, and that is Hellblade. Oh man, Uh, what more can I say about Hellblade other than just please buy this game, play this game. If you have a PC or a PS4, you owe it to yourself to play this game from Ninja Theory. The game looks great, it's got some really interesting puzzles, Uh, combat that is... not deep but it's still fun the thing that sets this above everything else is the story the audio design the performance by the main character elevated above all the other games beneath it i beat this game in two sittings it spoke to me on a level that a lot of games don't you know going on this journey with senua while she has this darkness inside of you and you have the headphones on which you must playing this game with headphones is a must because it sounds like when the voices talk to you that they're in your head as well and you can understand what Senua is feeling as she's going. It is experience that probably isn't rivaled by any other game. That audio experience with the voices talking to you that will help you in combat when they say behind you, that will trick you even because some of the voices aren't exactly friendly. You know, the great story you know, that it has about her going to uh, hell to, you know, retrieve the soul of her level, lover. It's a, f- it's a very touching story. So if you haven't picked it up yet, please pick up Hellblade. It is definitely worth the money and is my fourth best game of the year. And that brings us to the top three. So if you've been paying attention, you know, to what I've been saying on all my videos, you know, on the podcast, I'm sure you kind of know what three games are in here, but Do you know the order? Well, let's reveal that now. At number three, we have a game that came out back in January, almost a year ago, and that is Resident Evil 7. Oh, man. I haven't talked about Resident Evil 7 in such a long time, but this game blew me away, especially after coming off the heels of Resident Evil 6 and Resident Evil 5. You know, coming off of Resident Evil 4, which is like one of the best Resident Evil games, right? And then 5 and 6 were just so disappointing. Then they made the controversial choice of moving Resident Evil 7 to, you know, a first-person perspective. Maybe because of the success seen by other games like Outlast. But it just works for this game. And maybe you could say it's a little bit linear. But man, that feeling when you first get into the house, you meet the family... Uh, you go through the house trying to get the keys to escape. That entire first playthrough, I was just on the edge of my seat. And then I proceeded to play the game another four times because, you know, to get all the achievements. But because I really enjoyed Resident Evil 7, uh, I'm going to go back here pretty soon. And I'm going to play all the DLC. But my god, uh, especially coming off of 6, which was very mediocre, to see them come up. 
and just bring Resident Evil 7 back up to the heights that it used to be. I want Resident Evil 8 to be first person. You need to continue with that because this game has its moments where it's, you know, pretty scary. It has the jump moments. Of course, that isn't to say, you know, it does have its flaws. It kind of tapers off towards the end. But the first two-thirds of the game, it's on masterpiece level. I was thinking... This is going to be game of the year, similar to Prey. Like, if Prey's combat was good, it would have been number one. If Resident Evil maintained the first two-thirds pacing and story and everything, it would have been number one as well. But it falls off a little bit, which is why it's number three here. But still good enough to make the top three. So pick up Resident Evil 7, whether it's on Xbox, whether it's on PlayStation or PSVR. If you're a fan of those first-person horror games, if you're just a fan of games, period play this game number three and here we go top two what are they going to be so number two it's going to be what remains of edith finch i'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking ran's going to have edith finch as his number one ran likes his indie games last year he gave inside his number one right his game of the year over forza horizon 3 and i stand by that because i loved inside and that's not to say forza horizon 3 is a bad game. It's the best racing game ever made. If Inside didn't come out that year, Forza Horizon 3 would have been number one. And here we have an indie game. Although completely different, this is a walking simulator. And I know that's a dirty word. A lot of people don't like it. But it has story. It has narrative. It has heart. It has a lot of... It has the stuff that I'm looking for in a great story in a video game. Uh, It's kind of emotionally depressing when you actually get around to playing it but the way it sets itself apart from its contemporaries the other games like it like gone home or tacoma is the way it presents the stories presented within i just said presented a a bunch of times there so forgive me each of the stories that you experience play out in a different way that keep the gameplay fresh and engaging All the while, it's telling this story about Edith and her doomed family. And it's touching, it's emotional, it's sad. And it's only two hours long. So it doesn't outstay its welcome. Yeah, it can be a little expensive at $20 for a two-hour experience. And yeah, there's not a lot of gameplay in it per se like you would say, you know, get from a shooter or something like that. But this is a masterpiece of a genre. In its genre, this is the best it probably will ever get to. And if you want to see what a great story, great narrative, and all that stuff is all about, you need to pick up What Remains of Edith Finch. I've done two videos about it. It's a masterpiece. Please uh, pick up this game that was made by Giant Sparrow as it deserves uh, more and more attention because it is a lovely, lovely game. And finally, that brings us to number one. Well, what else could it be and other than Wolfenstein 2, uh, the first-person shooter from Bethesda and Machine Gun Games? You know, honestly, when I first started playing the game, I really wasn't enjoying it, especially when, you know, you get to New York, and it's like, man, they really screwed this game up. It's just not fun. You know, the the setting is drab. You know, New York's not a good place to be, basically, in that game. But then all of a sudden, Area 51 happens. And then the story segments. And it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. So when you have this game that already is a great shooter. Got great gunplay. Right? Maybe it relies a little bit too much on uh, the commanders showing up in every area. But it takes the elements that it had from New Order, the gunplay, which it excels at. But then you add a deep, nuanced story with some lovable characters that make you understand why BJ's the way he is. Mixed in with the zany, over-the-top ridiculousness that Wolfenstein is known for. You have my game of the year. I still think about those two particular moments in the game. Well, actually, three particular moments. Those moments stand out for me more than any other game I played this year. And that is why it is number one. Of course, like any game on this list, it has its flaws. Stealth isn't really a viable option. Uh, The beginning of the game is slow and plotting. But, man, once the story gets told, once you kind of figure out 
BJ's backstory. And once that kind of ridiculousness happens, it's just all engines go, man. And that's why you know, I beat the game in two sittings. A lot of these games, I beat the game in two sittings. If they're short enough, like Edith Finch, I beat it in one. But man, it is a great year for gaming. An absolutely fantastic year. Those are my top ten. You know, there have been some other ones, possibly, you know, if I send it out to 15. But I didn't really want to do that because the video would have been a much longer thing. So, what are your game of the year? I would love it if you listed me your 10 or 5 or just your favorite game that you played this year. Was it Persona 5? Was it Nier? Was it Uncharted Lost Legacy? Was it some of the Nintendo games that I didn't get a chance to play? Make sure you put those below. Make sure you even tell me, like, what would you like to see me play next year? Would you like to see me play Persona 5? I don't know how I'll have the time to play it, but I'm always, even though I'm not really that interested in it, I'm always looking for something new to play. So, what is your list? Make sure you comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the look at my top 10, uh, make sure you uh, give this video a like. Uh, share this out on social media like Twitter and Facebook and all those great places. Subscribe to the channel if you're new or haven't already. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're always notified when I do drop new content. It's been a fantastic year, and I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with me. Uh, the channel's grown a lot over the course of the year, and we're just getting started. But man, playing video games is the best thing about all this. I love talking about the games that speak to me, right? And I'm sure you guys can hear it in my voice as I talk about these games. I uh, can't wait to play all the great games that 2018 is going to bring us. And then a year from now, we can do this Game of the Year video again. Anyways, guys, really hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Later, guys.